to the Sports Circus. I'm your ringmaster, Sal, live from Las Vegas in the AMP TV studio, AAMP.TV. Today's show is brought to you by UppercutChops.com. Check out their tasty selection of all-natural, dry-aged, USDA prime Angus and Wagyu steaks and chops. Wait till you see their best-in-class New York steaks, the filet mignons, and, of course, the king of all, which are those gigantic cowboy and tomahawk ribeyes. Even the burgers, the Wagyu burgers, will blow you away. They'll probably be the best you've ever had. For more information, check out UppercutChops.com to see the full selection. Shop right from home or Give them a call at 702-799-9935 to place your order. 702-799-9935 for more information. 702-799-9935 for UppercutChops.com. All right, a big welcome in, everybody. Listening in on our CBS, NBC, and Fox Sports affiliates from coast to coast, Magic 97.NFM, right here in Las Vegas in the AMP TV, AAMP.TV mobile studio, Big welcome in to everybody on Cox, Comcast, Spectrum, Frontier, Wild Cable, Television Affiliates, as well as Hotel Television in every metered market in America. That's over 200 of them. We have a very special guest right now. In fact, he's got a cigar. He's going over there in the bright sunshine. We're going to let him introduce himself. Go ahead, young man. That's too bright here. It's cold, too. I'm just pretending to make sure everybody feel good about it. Jose Rio in the house, guy. Thank you for Jose having me. Jose Rio in the house, not Adam's phone. It's it's Jose Rio. All right, buddy. That's great stuff. Let's see if we can make a change to that on our display. All right. Jose, in case people have been living under a rock, they don't know who you are, what you've done. Why don't you tell everybody in 30 seconds real quick what you've been able to accomplish on the baseball diamond? Well, being from Dominican, people know that how much uh, play they come from Dominican. For me, come from San Cristobal, the little uh, city in Dominican, and be able to start playing ball with the Yankees, uh, be, comp- uh, be able to accomplish the MVP of the 1990 World Series with the Cincinnati Red. To me, that's a big thing. It's a beautiful thing. Uh, people that don't know, it was something that don't come, don't come easy because, uh, as you know, against the Oakland A's, who won like, went to five World Series straight, and us was uh, supposed to lose in four games. I beat them in four games, sweep them. It was something that I, I don't think has have been done before, but it was something hard to do and it came easy because we won four games in a row. Jose, I don't think people realize how good the Oakland A's were, but I don't think people realize how good the Cincinnati Reds were. I remember that series like yesterday. You know why? It's because I was actually in a U-Haul moving to Las Vegas when this was actually being played, when game four was being played on Halloween of 1990. (laughs) Who drove the U-Haul? Who drove it? (laughs) I drove the U-Haul. Are you kidding me? Okay. Come on, man. I guess, that's in case I'm wondering because I don't know if you had the ability because uh, driving a U-Haul with all that stuff in the back is not an easy drive. You know that. <laughs> that's right. But that, but it was Halloween of 1990 was game four. That was the clinching game. It's very exciting because I did not want to see the Bash brothers from the – the Oakland A's when I, I just, I didn't like Dennis Eckersley in the bullpen. I know he was good. I didn't like Eck coming out of the pen because remember he was a starter with the Boston Red Sox, right? Was, he was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at the end of the day, I, I look at it and say, this was a far better team being this, the Reds that everybody thought they were there on accident. They weren't there on accident. This was a really, really good squad. You know, it's funny because I always think, who going to analyze that World Series, Cincinnati against Oakland A's? Because to me, that team that played that year, they both, they, they, they all was in the prime. They got a great team together. I mean, they've been in the, in the World Series three or four times before that one. And us, it was just first time in a long time. And until the day, uh, the Cincinnati haven't won again. It was a major, major factor that I face in that World Series because knowing that good that team was, it was unbelievable. It was unbelievable. What was the most unbelievable thing that happened to you in that series? The day the day they started the game one, when I wake up in the morning, 
how we get the USA Today to re see what people think, what the early reporter think. And they say, I turned the first page in a sports station in the, in the USA Today, and I saw the four, first page, it got six photos of six players of Oakland A's. Then when I turned the page, second page, it got Cincinnati with Jose Rio photo only. I said, wow, that's a lot of pressure. That's how good they were back then. Well, to face Jose, that, the, 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 look, the thing was, your club was so much better than what people gave credit. They said, oh, it was David and Goliath. David and Goliath, my ass. No, you had the best team in the National League against the best team in the American League. That's it. And that's it. So tell me about your conversations with Dave Stewart after that. It was unbelievable. And it's good as Dave Stewart were. And something funny happened because me and Dave Stewart were very good friends because he happened to play in Dominican and Lisey, the team, with me uh, 10 years before maybe. And then to face him in the World Series, him being as good as he was, winning like 20 games, first season, and with the Oakland A's and have a Maguire, Conseco, Ricky Henderson, Dave Henderson, Dave Terry Steinbeck, uh, Willie Randolph, uh, Harold Vane, Kenny Lampo. Bro, it was unbelievable. He had to have, uh, he got to be well prepared to face that team without even getting nervous or without making a mistake. And unfortunately for them, I didn't make any mistake. Well, you know, all the pressure was on them, honestly. And the funny thing is, when you take, you take a guy like, and, and I know this for a fact, you and I both know the same thing. Ricky Henderson was an enormous trash talker, enormous trash talker. And in fact, Ricky tra- talked trash to the fans as well as everybody else too. all the opposing team. He was good. That's, that's Ricky being Ricky. But that's right. What? It's Ricky. Be, yep, yep. As much trash talking he did, he back it up. That guy, that guy was good. He was good. He's really good. He was, I, and so I can do this. It's okay. I got traded for him to make it even better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But you know what I what I loved about Ricky is that what he would do out there when he was playing left field, he would he would t- talk at the fans, but he would also hold his glove up and he would flip people off behind his glove. He would flip off all the fans and basically just give them a piece of business without opening his mouth on top of it. I absolutely loved that. I thought it was hilarious. He got, he got a good relationship with the fans. He got along well because fans like that. You know, yeah. fans go and tell people why they, why they talk about it with Ricky, that it's not normal. And Ricky was good at it. And the best thing about Ricky, the, all the trash you're talking I don't think it was that much track. He was real. He was that good. <laughs> you know what? I, I love the trash talking, but at the same time, when you look at that club, you say, all right, I think, I think Dave won 27 games that year. Did, did, I think Dave Stewart won 27 that year. He was 27 and four, something like that. I don't know, some crazy thing. But it didn't matter because all the pressure I remember, was on them. I, I only remember he was 0-2 in the World Series. That's all I remember. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, that's good stuff. And, of course, I know you've had a chance to talk to him, but let's talk a little bit about the players that come out of the Dominican Republic. We see this on a regular basis. We see a lot of San Pedro de Macariz. But in in the country itself, baseball is such a big deal. I remember my time over there, I would stop at the roadside to just watch the games being played in the park because the park games were just as good as what we'd see in the minor leagues anyway. That's the one thing that uh, right now, the thing, uh, the situation in Dominica got even better because now they build so many uh, baseball fields. Uh, they get the guy, uh, the, the kid at 12, 13 years old and develop to a, be a major league player. Uh, that farm in Dominican is really growing. And there's no confidence why we are number two in the world in producing major league players. Uh, beside California, Dominican is the second best country developing player. But we work at it. We good at it because that's what we do. Play ball. They said there's only two ways to leave the island is by throwing. Uh, fortunately, I was one of them or swinging. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's a long swim over to the next island. You know what I mean? All right. <laughs> yeah, that's a very long swim. Hey, listen, we've got one minute left in this segment. So in the next segment, I want to talk a little bit more about the Dominican Republic and the culture of baseball. It's kind of a big deal that people hear about it. 
like you said, you know, it, l- listen, man, it's a way of life at the end of the day, but I want to dig a little bit deeper into it on why it's either throw a ball or swim out. So we could talk a little bit about that. I used to have a place over there myself. And I have to tell you, I, I, I thought the people were phenomenal. The people were very, very nice. The food's great. The beaches are great. But there are some things that happen over there that people need maybe a little bit more resources. And let's dig into that in the next segment. What do you think? That sounds good to me. Yeah, I think that's great. And folks, we're here with the great Jose Rio, World Series champion, World Series MVP. He was even the strikeouts leader in 1993, Cincinnati Reds Hall of Fame, all the other accolades that come with it. The guy's got, I guess, apparently the best cigars in town on top of it, too. He's going to have to share those with everybody else, too. Believe it. Believe it. You got to be Fuente. Fuente cigar. <laughs> <laughs> all right, folks, we're going to be back in just a few minutes. Don't go anywhere. Last more to come here with Jose Rio. Back in a few. Nobody wants to get ripped off, broken into, or robbed, but nobody wants to pay a lot of money to have their home protected either. I've got an offer to tell you about to provide home security for your home for less than a dollar a day. For real, with no installation or equipment charges. And this is from a company rated number one by a leading consumer research company. According to the facts, most of you won't even call unless there's a burglary in your neighborhood or something bad happened. So let's give you a reason. Save money. For less than a dollar a day with no other costs, you can get your home secured. Plus, get a lifetime equipment replacement warranty. You need protection for your home. Call the Home Security Hotline right now. 800-361-3491. 800-361-3491. 800-361-3491. Again, that's 800-361-3491. AMP, the multi-format network, is here to help create, produce, distribute, and sell your content. For more information, send a message to info at aamp.tv. That's info at aamp.tv. Are you a small business owner or pursuing the dream of starting your own company? Do you know where to start or how to grow that existing business? The American Business Trust Company has the answers you need. The American Business Trust Company can help you with startup capital, business strategy, sales and marketing, and establishing your company with a physical location or on the Internet. You decide. You bring the idea. The American Business Trust Company can help with the rest. For a free evaluation, you may visit them online at abtrustco.com. That's A-B-T-R-U. USTCO.com or call them at 657 600 1876. That's the American Business Trust Company, 657 600 1876. Call them today. They can help your business right away. Come on, you watch the news. Be prepared to pay more taxes. Then, if you owe back taxes or haven't filed in a few years, get ready. The IRS, the largest collection agency in the world, will be coming after you. With the power to collect taxes by any means they want to. Hey, they can freeze your bank account, your passport, even padlock your business. Oh, good times. Look, if the IRS claims you owe them 5000 or more in back taxes and they're coming after you, don't panic. Call my friends at Get a Tax Lawyer first. Their job is to negotiate with the IRS and save you money. They're experts at it. That's all they do. And you can trust them. In some cases, they have reduced a $50,000 tax bill to less than 1000 If you owe the IRS 5000 or more in back taxes, call now for a free consultation. 800-908-7016. 800-908-7016. That's 800-908-7016. Thank you. 
Welcome back to the Sports Circus. I'm your ringmaster, Sal, live from Las Vegas in the AMP TV studio, AAMP.TV. This segment brought to you in part by Kelly Vegas, helping people create and host their very own radio, TV, or multimedia talk show. Kelly Vegas can help with everything they need to get out of sitting in hours of traffic, commuting back and forth to the same old boring job, and host their very own talk show in their very own home studio. Pete Rose, I'm talking to you. For more information, contact Kelly Vegas at 949-445-1119. That's 949-445-1119. Again, 949-445-1119. 945-1119 or visit online for more information at www.kellyvegas.com that's C-A-L-I Vegas.com all right, a big welcome back to everybody listening in on our CBS, NBC, and Fox Sports affiliates, including our friends over in Honolulu on CBS Sports 1500 KHKA. That's home of the 49ers, home of the San Francisco baseball giants, and the Alabama Crimson Tide. Big hello to our friends down in Southern California, sunny Southern California. That's NBC News and CNBC Financial. Also, right here in Las Vegas, Magic 97.9 FM, right around the corner from the Fremont Street Experience. Hello to our friends over in Natchez, Mississippi, Fairday, Louisiana, on Mid South Broadcasting 1. 107.1 The River. Thanks for joining us, as well as the world champion Atlanta Braves, WAUD in Auburn, Alabama, and in Atlanta, WDJY 99.1 FM, and everywhere else, streaming and watching us on Cox, Comcast, Spectrum, Frontier, Wow Cable, and Hotel Television. Here with the great Jose Rijo, and Jose, the world champion Jose Rijo, the strikeout champion Jose Rijo, the World Series MVP Jose Rijo, and also, by the way, in case you're keeping score, the Cincinnati Reds Hall of Fame, Jose Rijo. All right, did I cover everything, Jose? And the guy with the best cigars in town, too, right? Yes, Bolivia. And I, I was the Enron Alvarez King, too. Oh. You were right. Said, oh, I thought you said you were the Hamburger King. <laughs> 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 That's good stuff. <laughs> That's good stuff. All right, so hey, talk to me a little bit more about San Cristobal. Tell me a little bit more. It, it, it's it is very small town. That's the first city in the south part. It was uh, not too many players came out of there. Uh, Mondesi, Raul Mondesi, Jose Guillen, Jose Bay, who was our first major league player there. Uh, not too many players come out of there yet, but they got a lot of coming. Uh, very soon, uh, uh, we can say the Guerrero uh, family is, is from there too. They're from a uh, uh, little bit from between San Cristobal and Bani, but they uh, they got some very uh, interesting and very good play coming out of there. Well, Jose, are you active in the baseball in, with the kids and the baseball community back there still? With, with my kid, <laughs> my ah, kid. tell me yeah. a little bit more about yours. I just, you know, for me to go out there and work with somebody else's kid, it won't be fair for my kid or for myself to give time to somebody else. And my kid is in the verse to, to to develop as a player, and they love it. And I feel that I got better chance to make them a better person and a better player if you dedicate more time to them. And that's what I'm doing. What I, position? Uh, you know, they, they 14 and Ten years old, they play everywhere. But I also got a pitch. That's my main subject. I like the fact that you said they play everywhere at fourteen because, you know, in the U.S., a lot of times the kids will get pigeonholed very quickly from seven, eight, nine years old. This is where you're going to play, and you're not going to play in another position. It's not. That's not how it works down there. Like you said, they play everywhere because you don't know until later on where they're going to be good at. So you try to find the, the comfortable song for them. And, and to the to do that, you play it everywhere and make sure they get more chance playing. Because if, if, at, the, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, the most important thing is just have them play. That's all. Yeah, and, and the reason I mention this, I remember as a kid, as a, as a 12-year-old kid, the first time I played organized baseball, they put me on a pitcher's hill because, well, that's I had a big arm, right? But then... You know, my game, essentially, my brain is 60 foot, six inches. Then they put me out in center field because I could run fast. The problem is, in my brain, my game is 60 foot, six inches. It's not 200 feet, 300 feet. You see what I'm saying? And so the the perspective is very different from that part of the baseball field. But it is. The, I, I depend on your ability. I will feel more comfortable to do, you know, the 10 better than anybody else. And depend the competition 
he's facing that time and that team. Sometimes he can he might be he might be good shortstop, but he got a better shortstop ahead of you. So then the manager to use your ability, he puts you somewhere else. Then you start to develop the different position. And that's the case where you're young. You get you get used to the quick. Right. And and I was pigeonholed as a little kid. And so for me, it really tainted my view of the game because even when they put me in other positions, I didn't have that in my head. So here I'm in center field and I'm running in to catch a ball and the ball sailing over my head. <laughs> it wasn't in the center field. It was an infield. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, it was unbelievable. I, I was the worst center fielder I've ever seen. Then they tried to, they tried to hide me in right field, but they say he got a big arm so he could throw the ball, even if it gets over his head. And the yeah. problem is, you know, think about this as, as a pitcher, when you release, when you release the ball, did your middle finger come off the ball first? So you get the, the road. The pen. I only do that in, in, in the football. When you throw a football, you hold the ball between your finger. You use both fingers to, uh, uh, to make the movement of the ball where you're going to go left or right. Exactly. So then you put more pressure the way you, you want the ball to go to. And that's what I did. And the other pitches in the slider, fastball, curve, you got to have the same grip. Right. And so, see, what my problem was when I threw the ball is naturally my middle finger would just, when I just threw it, it would come off the ball first. So it would put that rotation. So I would have it, I would have it bend back to the left. So even when they put me in left field, I'll never forget this. They put me in left field and I, and I actually caught the ball. Who knew I caught the ball but I had to throw it at the dugout for it to curve back into home plate. <laughs> so you, you, naturally you were left-hander. <laughs> yeah. But, and I could not throw the ball straight. And that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. I never knew how to throw the ball straight. And here's the funny thing. The only way I could throw the ball somewhat straight is if I threw a slider. That's it. Oh my, that, that's, that's my best pitch you're talking about. I can talk about it. <laughs> So, all right. So, so now since you're not throwing, you're not pitching in the league anymore. What was it about the slider for you? Did, did it not hurt your elbow? Did you have a, an elbow I got, issue? Big time. I got five surgeries, including two Tommy John, who's a lot of people don't even come back at the one. I got two and I still was able to come back. I uh, used the slider. Uh, I, I it wasn't even a secret weapon. Everybody knew the slider was coming. As a matter of fact, I got a little story. In Atlanta, I was pitching that day, and uh, Dean Sander, who was playing at the time with Atlanta Bray, he asked Joe Oliver, the catcher, he said, Joe, I just want to know when we are going to throw the slider. I don't care about the fastball or the football. This just told me when he's going to throw the slider. Joe said, I'm going to tell you, but you know what? He ain't going to hit it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that, I, I, I love that. Especially in the count. And three, three and oh, three, two, it was automatic slider because I got it that good in control of that slider. Yeah, you know, I was recently watching a game and I was telling somebody, I said, look, just myself, I, I played the same position as you, not as well, of course, or as long, but I was watching, you know, the get me over pitch and I knew everything off speed. Everything that's the only thing this pitcher could get over the plate, period. Because you knew when he when they open the count up, you're gonna try to blow by with a fastball because he got no control. The plates jumping all over the place, right? And so, right. So if it's two one, three one, two oh, I knew every, the whole world must have known that something off speed was coming. And this guy was getting shelled because he had no control on his fastball. That that's the good thing. That's the one thing that people don't understand. Fast forward is the hardest pitch to hit out of the park. But us pitchers, we don't see it that way. Uh, we think because we get we control the, the the breaking ball better than the fastball most of the time because you got to have a good fastball in order to lose control. Of it. Because when you throw hard, it's hard to control it. But breaking ball, it's easy to control it. At least we think that way. But you got to have a good one in order to be effective. It's not the speed that matter. It's the count when you throw it. And the way you set up the header to throw the breaking ball to be more effective. Yeah. And you know what I do like here in our last minute of the segment? I love the fact that pitchers have returned to a strikeout pitch being that high fastball. 
Because you know when it's when it's up, it's it's hard to hit. It's hard to catch up to it. It's hard to catch up to it. You got to be real quick. You got to get on top of the ball. It, it's almost impossible to do it. You know what I find interesting is with the and I want to talk about this in the next segment with hitters because they uppercut a lot. Now they've they've uppercut. Now, even the scout now when they're going to see a hitter, they got to they got to have the open cut. I don't even know why. I don't. They, it's stupid. It is. One of the best hitters ever that I ever seen was Dan Winfield. He got that level swing. Uh, he was hitting everything. He was a great hitter. Uh, and today, you know, open cut, you're not a good hitter. Well, I want, I want to talk about that in the next seven. We're going to go to break in about would, 20 seconds. I would, I would love to be pitching in this air now oh. because that would have been how easy it is. You, you would have won 30 games. All right, don't go anywhere, folks. We're going to be back here in just a few minutes with – World champion, Jose Rijo, in just a few minutes, folks. Don't go anywhere. You don't want to miss this one. Back in a few minutes. Attention business owners, you and your customers are listening to this commercial right now. Face it, every business needs customers, even yours. The Sports Circus is a primetime nationally syndicated program that's carried on ABC, NBC, CNBC, and Westwood One News affiliates, plus CBS, Fox, and NBC sports affiliates across North America with coverage from Hawaii to New York. Also, the Sports Circus is available to the 180 million subscribers on iHeartRadio, and the Sports Circus gets about 4 million website visitors per month, which could click through your website and bring sales. The Sports Sports Circus provides great content featuring celebrity guests from sports and entertainment to our audience every weekday, which your company could greatly benefit from by increasing your visibility, foot traffic, eyeballs to your website, and calls from potential customers. Call us right now at 702-799-9935. Again, 702-799-9935. Or email us at info at thesportscircus.com. That's info at thesportscircus.com. Drive your sales today by advertising with the Sports Circus. Nobody wants to get ripped off, broken into, or robbed, but nobody wants to pay a lot of money to have their home protected either. I've got an offer to tell you about to provide home security for your home for less than a dollar a day. For real, with no installation or equipment charges. And this is from a company rated number one by a leading consumer research company. According to the facts, most of you won't even call unless there's a burglary in your neighborhood or something bad happened. So let's give you a reason. Save money. For less than a dollar a day with no other costs, you can get your home secured. Plus, get a lifetime equipment replacement warranty. You need protection for your home. Call the Home Security Hotline right now. 800-361-3491-800-361-3491-800-361-3491. Again, that's 800-361-3491. So, you want to be in show business. Do people tell you that you're really funny, you have a great personality, and you should have your own talk show? Many of us have been told that, but we don't know how to get started. It's easier than you think. Let the pros at Cali Vegas give you a free talent evaluation. Call 949 445 1119 and learn how quickly you can create, produce, and host your very own talk show. Imagine not having to sit in traffic every day, commuting back and forth to the same old boring job. Get started in television or radio today with your free talent evaluation from Cali Vegas. Call 949 445 1119 or visit them online at calivegas.com. Make your dream come true today and create your new career and learn how to become a television or radio star with the help of Cali Vegas. 949 445 1119. Call now. Welcome 
Welcome back to the Sports Circus. I'm your ringmaster, Sal, live from Las Vegas in the AMP TV studio, AAMP.TV. This segment brought to you in part by Legal Shield, providing legal protection and peace of mind. Legal Shield could help with traffic tickets, texting and driving, DUIs, court appearances, maybe a pitcher drilled you in the side of the head because you didn't like the way you're looking at him and you need a lawyer. Contact Legal Shield for more information, 213-245-1305. That's 213-245-1305. Whatever you do, don't look at the pitcher funny because he may drill you right in the knee on top of it. 213-245-1305. That's Legal Shield. Check him out at nocourt.us. That's www.nocourt.us. Us. All right, welcome back to everybody on our CBS, NBC, and Fox Sports affiliates from coast to coast, hotel television, and of course, Magic 97.9 FM right here in Las Vegas and everybody else here with the great Jose Rijo. And Jose, we were talking about in the last segment, right before we were going to break and during break about this idea, this idiotic idea of an uppercut for hitters in today's baseball game. Is that the stupidest thing you've ever heard or what? I hear so many stupid things in baseball today. It is unbelievable. It amazes me because uh, the uppercut swing, bro, it's just very few guys had it and it, it, it go well against it. But they're looking for the home run so much now that they even changing the, the, the swing and the header. And to me, as a pitcher, I would have loved to be pitching in this, in this air now because it will have the advantage for me. Because none of the guy can hit the high pitch. And if you pick inside and you get the outside for yourself, it's 90% chance you're going to be successful when you're pitching again if you're smart, if you control your pitches. But today, with a level swing, it, it becomes so big thing that the scout, when they're going to look a player, if you don't have the uppercut swing, sometimes they don't even want to see it. I don't even know why. I think it's a stupid thing that I see in baseball right now. I agree. And, and here's the, this is for all the people that don't understand why it's stupid. So we have a flat surface. We have home plate. That's a flat surface and we have a level swing that we were taught as kids. And the level swing keeps the baseball bat in the hitting zone, in the hitting area for the duration of the plate, rather than coming uppercut, it intersects home plate. So, in other words, your chances of hitting the ball are dramatically less with an uppercut swing than hitting with a level swing. And what's worse is that uppercut swing, if you don't hit it in the sweet spot, you're going to either beat the ball into the ground or you're going to pop it straight up in the air. Oh, you're in trouble. Even if you hit it, you're not hit it as well. It's not going to go nowhere. But when you hit it well, it's going to trouble. Of course, you're going to trouble more. But your chances are very limited, are very little in order for you to hit the ball square. Yeah, you know, it was about two seasons ago I heard uh, Miguel Caprera talking about how he switched to an uppercut swing. Did you did you see the same thing I did? I did, I did, I did. But uh, to me, it don't, it, don't, it don't make any sense as a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a fan. But if you have a pitcher, I would have loved to, then to have the uppercut swing because it worked the advantage for the pitcher if the pitch is smart enough and had a good control of his pitches. Yeah, and I, I just think baseball is making – Rob Manfred is making a lot of mistakes with the game. Juicing the baseball and then bringing it back a little bit, then juicing it even more, you know, wind it a little bit tighter. The ball will go further. Fans want to see home runs. That's a bunch of BS because at the end of the day, he's tinkering with the game that doesn't need to be tinkered with. But I don't even know why people want to watch a game that, that is finished 10-7, to 7, or 12-5. to 5. I like you, me as a player. Uh, as the fans right now, I like to see the game two to one, three to two. You know, we're very close game. Uh, home run is perfect, but I, to me, what, what excites me more than home run, I strike out with the base he loaded. I think to me, more is more excited. But today, the way the ball is built and the way they doing the game, they they doing the more for the assignment of the home run for the game. And glad they are having a great game or a good game being played like the way they used to be. I believe the baseball is juiced 100%. That's my belief. Do you have an opinion? I don't think it's juiced, but it's prepared for the header. The ball travel farther and quicker than they used to be before, without a doubt. And so if it's a shorter, they used to be 425 footer. Now they like 370, 325. I don't understand that. I don't, yeah, I don't either. 
I don't either. And I mean, I look at it this way. If it's prepared, that means the balls may be wound a little bit tighter because remember major league baseball now owns Rawlings. Yeah, you, you don't see this stolen base anymore. You don't see the hit and run. You don't see the base with the way you used to play. That's not a, a sight anymore. It's like you got to go to the game to look for the home run and that's it. See, for me, I was very upset when they started the designated hitter in the National League because all the strategy is gone now in the National League. But not only that, how do you compare the team from before the, the team play now? It's a totally different game. The bases are bigger now. He, can, he cannot block home play. He cannot break double play like he used to. He cannot pitch inside. I mean, how did the heck you play the game or you compare one play to another today? He can't do that. It's impossible. Yeah, they, they want a home run because they think the fans want home runs. But, Jose, here's the problem. The fans, by the way, folks, a big welcome back to everybody just tuning in. We're here with Jose Rijo, by the way, World Series champion, Reds Hall of Fame, World Series MVP, all that stuff. Look him up, Google him, he's everywhere. And, by the way, make sure you follow him on Facebook, too, and all those other social media. But the fact is, Jose, when you look at the game today and you say, all right, you have all these changes in the game and they say it's all for the fans, but the fans are busy on their smartphones checking in. Hi, I'm here. Look at me. Here's a selfie with an ice cream cone or with my friends. They're not watching the game. Now they have netting around the whole damn stadium and people should learn to keep their heads up at the game instead of heads down. We're looking at a telephone. It's all right. It's real for everybody. They, those fans, they do that. They're not real baseball fanatics. Because when you are a baseball fan, you go to the game, you can enjoy nine innings of the game. You pay attention to every little detail. So when you go back or out of the game, you can tell what happened. What do people do? They go watch it in the, in the phone, or watch it in TV, and then they can talk about it. That's not fair. But they're not real, they're not real, real baseball fanatics. You know, I, I have a story. Listen to this one. So the World Baseball Classic 2008, I think it was 2009, 2009. So it was in Los Angeles. I went to go see the U.S. and Japan play. And you remember Adam Dunn, big Adam Dunn. Adam Dunn is up. Yeah, I know. Right. That's why I say you remember him. Adam, a big, big guy. And when he connected, man, he connected. And I was sitting even with the right fielder down the line at Dodger Stadium. And next to me. There was a Japanese girl right on the other side of the aisle, right on the aisle in the box seat. She was right on the other side of the aisle. And here come Adam Dunn. And Adam Dunn hits those low line drives. That's just the way he swung the bat. And so Adam, he hit a 15 foot off the ground, screaming line drive. And I turned to it and I'm ready. I'm scared because I know it's going to break my hands if I hit it, right? If I catch it. But what happened was the ball hit the Japanese girl right square in the side of the head. What was she doing? She was on her cell phone. Everybody that will listen to the radio right now, the program, you got to pay attention to that. It could have happened to you too. So if you if you go to the game, pay attention to the ball. You got to keep your eyes on the ball the whole time because there's no safe place in the stadium. If, if you're not watching, they might be, be able to get hit. And you don't well, want that to- well, Jose, because of stuff like that, now there's netting down the sidelines when you're going down the down through foul territory because of people like that that don't pay attention and they get hurt at games. Now they wreck it for everybody that maybe wants to get a ball for their kid or something and 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 just be a part of the game closer without a net in between. The only way you can get around that is in the outfield or in the upper deck. It's, it's hard to think that quick when a ball when a ball hits you right at you that hard. But me, me, as a player, if you're watching the game and a ball comes to me, I just get out of the way because I know how much damage can do. That's me being a baseball player. You as a fan, if you don't play ball, you got to be careful too because uh, the damage, it could be worse. All you got to do is watch because then you I, could I duck. I want to get the ball for the kid. I know you want to get the baseball for your kid or for yourself, but you don't want to have a ball to your kid with a big old swollen eyes or a big broken <laughs> dog. <laughs> right. Well, imagine, you know, sometimes people catch the ball with their beer, but you can't catch the ball with the side of your head. you got to just be able to duck, and that's it. Get out of the way. Get out of the, get out of the way, guy. Oh, that's one of the players for ball. I know they're all not, not all they're so nice. They give it to you, but you get a better chance to get a ball when it's cold and free and it's right there. And then catch a land dry and be, you know, and get hurt. Oh, sometimes you 
forget about you with your kid. Uh, you just take your mind away from your kid. Uh, your boy might hit your kid. That's another reason why you should be careful because your kids are there. So you got to be able to protect them. Yeah. Well, Jose, listen, before we go to break, I got to tell you this. You'll get a kick out of this. So I was at, at old Comiskey Park, old Chicago, uh, where the White Sox played. And I was right next to the foul pole one time. I was in the front row, right next to the foul pole. And your old teammate, Walter Weiss, was up. And so Walt Weiss, you know, he was a dead pole hitter. And I'm thinking, okay, it's maybe 38 degrees. It's a cold day. I know the, he hits the ball uh, as a low line drive, home run. And I'm like, uh-oh, this is going to hurt. It's going to hurt my hands. So I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. At the last second, I duck. And it hit the kid behind me right in the belly who was eating a pizza. And it dropped right at his feet, right to my feet. Boom. And I got the ball. And guess what? I still have that ball today. How do you like that? You should have bring your baseball glove to the field, too. <laughs> I didn't need it. I had the kid behind me belly. <laughs> well, <laughs> sorry for the pizza. He, he I, know. The pizza. <laughs> I know. Folks, we're going to be back here with Jose Rio in just a few minutes, folks. Don't go anywhere. Lots more to come here on the circus. You don't sit behind a desk every day to earn a living. You're out and about making it happen. And sometimes you get a little bit behind on your paperwork, you know, like bookkeeping and paying your taxes. It's easy to get behind on paying your taxes. It happens to the best of us. And you know what happens next. The big bad IRS comes knocking on your door. And when that happens, you need to call the good old boys at the tax doctor. Let them do what they do best. Deal and negotiate with the IRS so you pay the lowest you can in back taxes that the law allows. We are a 100% U.S.-based company, and we've saved our clients millions over the years in back taxes. If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes, call my friends right now at the tax doctor and learn more. 800-989-1694. 800-989-1694. 800-989-1694. That's 800-989-1694. Nobody wants to get ripped off, broken into, or robbed, but nobody wants to pay a lot of money to have their home protected either. I've got an offer to tell you about to provide home security for your home for less than a dollar a day for real with no installation or equipment charges and this is from a company rated number one by a leading consumer research company according to the facts most of you won't even call unless there's a burglary in your neighborhood or something bad happened so let's give you a reason save money for less than a dollar a day with no other costs you can get your home secured plus get a lifetime equipment replacement warranty you need protection for your home Call the Home Security Hotline right now. 800-361-3491. 800-361-3491. 800-361-3491. Again, that's 800-361-3491. That's the sound of sizzling, dry-aged USDA prime Wagyu and Angus steak from UppercutChops.com. They're best in class filet mignons, New York steaks, and the king of all steaks, the tomahawk and cowboy cut ribeyes are the best in the business. Even their prime Wagyu burgers will likely be the best you've ever had. Browse the full selection of steaks and chops at UppercutChops.com from the comfort of your home or on your mobile device. UppercutChops.com delivers all natural, dry-aged USDA prime Wagyu and Angus steaks and chops directly to your door. Without the hassle of going to the grocery store and fight crowds to pick from a small selection of average at best meats with injected steroids, fillers, and coloring added to look good. Find out what's for dinner at UppercutChops.com or call 702-799-9935 That's 702-799-9935 702-799-9935 or make your selection directly at UppercutChops.com Thank you. 
to the Sports Circus. I'm your ringmaster, Sal, live from Las Vegas in the AMP TV studio, AAMP.TV. Make sure you like, subscribe, and follow AAMP.TV. It stands for All Ages Media Programming television in case you're keeping score amp tv all right a big welcome back to everybody you know who you are i don't have to keep explaining it but guess what we're here with the great jose rijo in fact folks make sure you follow this guy the hall of famer the world series champion the world series mvp the strikeout king make sure you follow him he's going to tell you how to follow him right now just go to Facebook, Jose A. Rijo, uh, and, and all the media. Just look for Jose Rijo. I'm, I'm there, baby. Because if you look up, you're going to have fun. It's going to be entertainment. You do a lot of videos, too. I like the videos. They're entertaining. It is, because you want to you want to keep up with your fans, you know, especially in Cincinnati. I had so many great fans, and I got so much love that I come to Cincinnati that I got to follow. I got to keep up with them because it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Parents, you make a lot of friends, good relationships, and it's awesome. And I think players, at the day retire, they should keep uh, focus and keep friends with the fans because the fans, they're not just when you play. they fans forever. Well, you know, Jose, you have a lot of friends, a lot of fans in Southern California, too. And the reason being is because all those Angels fans that couldn't seem to get past, the Angels couldn't seem to get past the Oakland A's, for example, the World Series time, everybody was rooting for the Cincinnati Reds at that time. Hey, I got a lot of them. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, I, I got to tell you, well, uh, you know, there's there's a lot of people in Southern California that were very happy that the Oakland A's did not win that second World Series. I mean, they weren't a dynasty. If they would have won two World Series on their way to a third one, that's where you kind of draw the line, isn't it? And they had the chance. They had the chance. They don't complete the mission, but they had the chance. So that don't make them like what people think they were. They were good. I give it to them. They got a great team, but they only had one World Series champion. And I only won one time. Uh, we won. They won, I think, four or five times, and they only got one. That's right. Well, guess what? That's because they were playing that World Series with 10 fingers wrapped around their throat. That's why. Believe it. Believe it. <laughs> <laughs> what about the what about the pressure of playing in a game when you know you're supposed to win, right? Well, tell me about that. Well, the, the game, you know, I was not to be be honest. It's okay. It's just us. Yeah, but I don't want people to think that I was just good, or, or, or I don't always think that I was that good because I was good, and I, and I feel so confident, and I feel so great at the mound when I was pitching that I. I feel I'm unhittable. The only way that I was going to lose again if I was making a mistake, and I make very few because I prepare for that one day that I was pitching the best I could to best of my lattice. If I give up more than three runs and again, I would go out there and work harder to make sure it don't happen to me again at least for another two, three months. That's why it became that good because I believe in myself and I work very hard out of it. You know, Jose, what I don't like in today's game is that the – the management is worried about pitch count. They're worried about all this other crap that doesn't matter. Cause at the end of the day, think about this. You know why, right? They too much goddamn money. They got to protect the guy arm. And what happened anyway? Look what happened. Right. Everybody got the on the nerve problem. Absolutely. Absolutely. They say, Oh, they, they say, oh, it's, it's, we have a Tommy John problem. No, you have an all the nerve problem. It's because you're throwing too much slider. You're tweaking your wrist, wrist too much and you're building up too much in the weight room when you're supposed to be a fluid body. You're not supposed to be a big, burly guy pitching on the hill. Long and lean muscle. That's what you need. A lot of repetition, not, not big. And when you get big, it's for the after the game. They want to look good. But doing the field, you want to look lean, long, and strong. You don't want to look fit. That's one thing that I have uh, that I was thinking. Now, last year, it put the the ice in the cake when I was watching the uh, playoff on the World Series. I do not see, I do not saw one pitcher pitch more than three innings in those yeah. games. What the game, what kind of game we playing today, bro? Wow, world, ovation. 
Buddy, this this is we're playing on another planet because this is not the baseball that we know. What we're seeing are we're saying, oh, this guy can only pitch and face one hitter or two hitters. You have this stupid role of a closer. The guy comes in and throws four pitches and he's suddenly a hero. With the reality is the oh, closer yeah. oh, he came in, he got to face three guy if he came in yeah. reliever. L- I mean, listen to this. I, I want your I want your opinion on this, Jose. Because you think back to guys like Denny McLean that would throw, win 30 games in a year, and this guy was throwing eight, nine innings. Your starting rotation is strong. Your relievers show just how weak your starting rotation is, right or wrong. Well, most of the pitchers in the past, they got as many wins as as many complete games. Today, right. they got three complete games and 30 games. I don't understand that. F, that's too much. I don't even know why. Why are they doing? I don't understand that. It's the stupidest thing I've ever seen because, oh, they say, well, we want, we say, well, the third time around, the hitter has seen everything that the pitcher has. So we're going to bring somebody else in. If the pitcher is good enough, it doesn't matter if they've seen him on a hundred times. But not not only that, I knew before a lot of pitcher that the more they were pitching, the better they would get. Now they don't get chance to have those pitchers to be better or to prove themselves to the people, to the fans, to the manager, that they can become a better pitcher. I remember LeBron Hernandez. He, he would get about five runs in one inning, but he's still pitching a complete game. Today, you get about two or three runs, and you're out of the game. Like you throw a, 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 three pitches, and you're out of the game. It's unbelievable. Jose, they're, they're hurting the starting pitchers because what they're not doing is they're not letting them face adversity. Exactly. Today, we got some team that have better better relief pitcher than starting pitcher. Why? Because they're changing the game. They want three or four innings out of the starting pitcher because they have five or good reliever that can't close the game. But that's, that's but you bad. burn everybody's arm out. If you start exactly. bringing these guys in, let's go here, then let's go here, let's go here, let's go. You burnt out your whole bullpen. And by the way, when it comes to dog days of summer in August, nobody's got an arm left. Everybody's hose is hanging. And don't forget <laughs> that they play eight months, two months of spring training, and six months in the season. It's okay, it's good to sometimes to get three, three or four days rest to get your arm back. They can't do it today because those guys got to pitch every day. You don't know what he's going to be pitching. He might be pitching two, three innings today. He might be pitching the next two days in a row, and that really hurting the day out there pitching staff. And they don't think that way. They prefer. The pitcher, the starting pitcher, the pitch three or four innings, and they go on with reliever instead of let the pitcher, the starting pitcher go five or six innings unless the guy, you know, get the, the job done and the way he's supposed to do. Yeah, and, and the, the the bigger the problem is- with, Jose, the bigger problem with all of this is that not only are the kids or the, the pitchers today not facing adversity, but look, whatever happened to the eye test? Now, you knew as probably as well as any other pitcher, as did I, if you were missing up, generally you were tired, right or wrong? Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's one thing that a pitcher, that the manager, become good at it, knowing the situation of the pitcher, know by the way that he's pitching they, uh, when he gets tired. Today, they, don't, they got a pitch count. Even if you throw on the ball good, they get you out because you reach a limit. And I don't understand that. I don't, don't understand. It's got Duke. When they find out the real age of my Duke, they limited his pitching. And what happened? He got hurt right away. Because the more he was pitching, the better he was getting. He was pitching better when he was tired than when he was strong. You know why? Because he was pitching smarter. That's why. He, he pitched. When he's strong, he throw the ball. That's in two different situations. That's right. A lot of people don't understand that. Absolutely. And it surprised me that you are an interviewer and you asking me all those kind of questions, which, which, by the way, they are very good questions. And you, you seem to know the knowledge. Yeah, I understand it's the real situation because a lot of people don't understand and they don't care. As long as they play the game the way they do it, they want to see home run. For those who know baseball, they want to tend to do it right. They want to see the pitcher do the right thing. They want to watch Jose Rio pitching in the mile five, six, seven innings because they want to see Jose Rio. They don't want to see the bullpen the whole time. That's why they named the starting pitcher because he's the age of that day. And people go there to see that person. So they want to see him full develop. They want to see him a full game. 
They wanted to throw a complete game. Yeah, I believe that people want to see complete games, but they're not accustomed to it anymore because it's not a part of the game anymore. And it's frustrating when I talk to I talk to a lot of guys like yourself and they they don't even want to watch baseball because all it is is a bunch of changes all the way across the board. And the game is not what we knew it as. The, 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 uh, that's why I got such a great relationship with Lou Pinella. When he was managing me, he never took me out with that asked me how I'm doing. The only time he took me out without asking me, it was against four in the World Series. In the ninth inning, I strike out the first guy in the ninth inning. And I retired the last, the, the first 22 in a row. And he took me out. I was so mad at him that day. He said, Rio, you do your job, let me do mine. I said, lovely. I hope you do yours. And well, I did mine. He said, now I see you all side. It don't happen anymore. Those guys right. are happy taken out in the third or the fourth or fifth inning. I know. Listen, Jose, we're running on time right now. Tell everybody again how to follow you, what you're working on. Take one minute and do that. Well, I, I'm just really, you know, I love to keep connected with my fans. I love to keep talking about baseball because I don't do it as often that I do. When I normally do, I do it in a personal way. But I would like to see a lot of questions. I like to hear lots of questions, a lot of comments about people because my relationship with the fans with the, I want it to be forever because I'm always going to be a baseball player. I might not play right now, but I'm going to follow baseball. And I love to do things with the fans because they were good to me. I am Jose Rio because of fans. i one of the few players, I think, that know and understand the fans was more important than the owner and the player and everybody because we play for them. They pay our salary. The, the check might sign by somebody else, but the money's come from the fans. And I really do like, I, I do love that. And you want to follow me, go to Facebook and follow me, go to the, um, the other social media that I've been in. I'm, I'm all over the place. So if you want to follow me, just, I invite you to. And any kind of question, I don't care what kind of question you want to know, because you open, I'm open to anything. That's good stuff. All right, Jose, we're going to expect you back on the show again. We're coming to an end. And thanks for joining us. Hall of Famer and World Series champion, World Series MVP, strikeout king. That's Jose Rijo, folks. Cincinnati Reds also played for the A's and, of course, with the Yankees and Sweet Lou Pinella as well. Listen, folks, make sure you tune in in 23 hours right here on your favorite station. And we'll see you next time with yet another great episode of the Sports Circus. Until then... Thanks to Jose Rijo, and we'll see you next time. So long, everyone. owner or pursuing the dream of starting your own company do you know where to start or how to grow that existing business the american business trust company has the answers you need the american business trust company can help you start up with capital business strategy sales and marketing and establish your company with a physical location or an online presence on the internet you